Once it was called Chang'an, today we know it as Xi'an. This ancient capital, home to emperors and their courts, has an unrivaled and epic history. Chang'an enjoyed its golden age during the Tang Dynasty, when a magnificent imperial palace was built there. But what physical evidence of that prosperity remains? Stay tuned for Architecture of Prosperous Tang in the series From Chang'an to Xi'an. In the early years of the Tang Dynasty, in the first half of the 8th century, the renowned poet Li Bai lived in Sichuan. He was enjoying life, spending much of his time drinking with friends. But still, he yearned for something different, to live in a great and prosperous city where the emperor resided with his concubines. I am endlessly yearning to be in Chang'an. Heaven is high, earth wide. Bitter between them flies my sorrow. Can I dream through the gateway over the mountain? Endless longing breaks my heart. Finally, in 7.30, Li Bai traveled to Chang'an. It was the first time he had set foot in the city. It was probably the greatest city in Chinese history, and he found it even more magnificent than he had imagined. Zumianji,大概有八十四平方公里,比现在这个民长城啊,比现在的民长城大约要大七倍多。北京一的十个里说是,北千家四围七举,十二街入重菜起,这个,谁,谁唐时期的这个长安城的面积构图啊,方方正
The man the emperor put in charge of the building project was a 26-year-old architect named Yuan Kai. A highly creative young man, he believed that a city, especially the capital of the emperor, the son of heaven, should reflect heaven and be a symbol of the universe. To this end, he took his inspiration from observing the stars. So what did Yuan Kai's city look like? Chinese 一种精神的需求和社会的活动的内容相互的衔接和谐，而且这种和谐当了非常注意，就就刚像物质学家非常注意城市的它的生活环境。In 618, 37 years after the city was completed, the Sui Dynasty was overthrown. A new dynasty, the Tang, took power, and the name of Da Xing was changed to Chang'an. For the next 300 years, as the Tang capital, Chang'an was a place where the imperial family lived in great splendor, and ordinary people led a simple life. More towering pavilions and grand halls were built, and Chang'an was celebrated as an architectural marvel. Over the following centuries, Chang'an fell and rose, and fell and rose again, as dynasties came and went. But as a great city and national capital, Chang'an remained the symbol of Tang culture. Once it was called Chang'an, today we know it as Xi'an, this ancient capital, home to emperors and their courts, has an unrivaled and epic history. Chang'an enjoyed its golden age during the Tang Dynasty, when a magnificent imperial palace was built there. But what physical evidence of that prosperity remains? Stay tuned for Architecture of Prosperous Tang in the series From Chang'an to Xi'an, Today, most of Tang Dynasty Chang'an is buried deep beneath the modern city of Xi'an. However, it has been possible, with the help of modern science and archaeological technology, to reveal the great palace that was once home to the Tang emperors. In the spring of 635, the Tang Emperor Tai Zong ordered a summer palace to be built for his father, the former Emperor Gao Zhu. However, Gao Zhu died before the palace could be completed and work was halted. 26 years later, Emperor Gao Zong ordered building to start again. Eventually, it would become the imperial palace called the Da Ming Palace and the most important building in all of Tang Dynasty China. 
Da Ming Palace was designed by the celebrated painter and architect Yan Li Ban. In its scale, the palace has rarely been matched by any other construction project in Chinese history. Although the vast quantities of bricks and tiles needed for the palace were produced locally, timber and stone had to be brought in from across the country. Hundreds of thousands of workers participated in the project. Han Yuan Hall, the main hall at Da Ming Palace, was completed in 663. Emperor Gao Zong and his empress soon abandoned Tai Chi Palace, also in Chang'an, and moved into the new hall. With a supreme ruler now in residence, Da Ming Palace acquired unrivaled status as the center of power and symbol of the Tang Dynasty. On the southern side of the central axis of Da Ming Palace stood the Danfeng Gate. Known as the first gate in prosperous Tang, it guarded the main route along which emperors entered and left the imperial city. For over 200 years, it was also the place where emperors were enthroned and conducted religious ceremonies. The Tang poet Zhang Hu wrote a verse describing a daily audience at the imperial court of the Tang dynasty. It reads, official civil and military lining up to present the reports to the emperor. The emperor works at Han Yuan Hall, where Danfeng Gate offers a grand view. Da Ming Gong's this Tang Dynasty Gate, Danfeng Gate, is very special. It's the Gong Gate's Gate. It's bigger than the entire Tang Dynasty Gate. It's bigger than the entire Tang Dynasty Gate. It's bigger than the entire Tang Dynasty Gate. 因为唐长安是隋代时候建的，啊，他的大门也是五个门洞，每个门洞的宽度是五米多。这个大明宫是在唐代的鼎盛时期，啊，呃，虽然唐太宗开始是唐高宗时候，啊，主要建的，他五个门洞，每个门洞是八点五个。八点五米宽，你看那个城市大门才五米多宽，它八米多宽，所以整个这个门宏伟异常，啊，比一般的城门都宏大。North of the Danfeng Gate was Han Yuan Hall, the heart of Da Ming Palace. With its great size and towering structure, it was the most magnificent hall ever built in China. In the first 200 years of its existence, Han Yuan Hall was a place where the emperors appointed officials and dispatched envoys. It was also where the army would be reviewed before setting out for battle and after returning victorious. Another Tang poet, Wang Wei, described his personal experience at an imperial audience. A magnificent palace under heaven. People from all nations gathered at Han Yuan Hall. Han Yuan Hall was built on an elevated site with its base 15 meters above ground level. To make access easier for officials, two ramps were built, 
one on the west side and the other on the east. These ramps were called dragon tail ramps. The poet Bai Ju Yi described the magnificent spectacle of hundreds of civil and military officials lining the ramps during an imperial ceremony. Two dragon tails, one on each side of the hall. On them, officials resembled two lines of geese in flight. The annals of San Shi describe how Han Yuan Hall, Xuan Zheng Hall, and Zhe Chen Hall were built from south to north along the central axis at different elevations according to the terrain. These were the three palaces where the emperor attended meetings to deal with state affairs. The once magnificent Da Ming Palace was destroyed long ago. But as part of the country's history, it remains a dazzling symbol of Chinese civilization. Today, the Da Ming Palace National Heritage Park commemorates the Great Palace. But there are no reproductions of Tang pavilions and halls. Instead, modern ideals and concepts are employed to recreate the spirit of the Tang Dynasty. Looking to the west from the old part of modern Xi'an, from the top of the 13-story, 99-meter-high Chang'an Tower, you will see the Greater Wild Goose Pagoda. Built in 652, Greater Wild Goose Pagoda, with its stocky form and simple design, is regarded by Xi'an residents as a symbol of their city. Belief in Buddhism was widespread in Tang Dynasty China. Buddhist temples were scattered all across the capital. In 645, the monk Xuanzang returned to Chang'an following his 17-year journey to India. He brought with him hundreds of Buddhist scriptures and treasures. In 652, Xuanzang obtained court approval to design and build a pagoda to house his Buddhist scriptures. This was the Greater Wild Goose Pagoda. With its completion, the grand simple tower located in the western part of Dacheran Temple was the tallest building in the city. This Sun 是我们国家这个罗格式的专塔的那种优秀典范 Once it was called Chang'an, today we know it as Xi'an. This ancient capital, home to emperors and their courts, has an unrivaled and epic history. Chang'an enjoyed its golden age during the Tang Dynasty, when a magnificent imperial palace was built there. But what physical evidence of that prosperity remains? Stay tuned for Architecture of Prosperous Tang, in the series From Chang'an to Xi'an. Greater Wild Goose Pagoda has changed little in appearance in the course of over a thousand years. It is regarded as a rare masterpiece of Chinese Buddhist architecture and hailed as the finest example of a Buddhist pagoda from the Tang Dynasty. The Tang Dynasty poet Chen Shen wrote the pagoda rising abruptly from the earth reaches to the very palace of heaven. Climbing, we seem to have left the world behind us, with the steps we look down on hung from space. It overtops a holy land and can only have been built 
by the toil of the Spirit. Its four sides darken the bright sun. Its seven stories cut the gray clouds. Ta 这就是今天所见的这个大雁塔的这个造型。Inspired by Greater Wild Goose Pagoda and Tang culture, today's Xi'an residents have created the Da Tang Sleepless City. When night falls, it's as if the golden age of the Tang Dynasty has returned. History is harsh, but also even-handed, and no dynasty has ever been allowed to last forever. In 904, a rebel military governor named Zhu Wen had the Tang Emperor Zhao Zong put to death and sacked Chang'an. Virtually the whole city was destroyed by fire. Zhongsuo周之呢, 所以说唐禅臣即使是先在历史上呢一个最大和发展的一个最高潮点和盛点但同时来说呢又是一个呢终结作为都城历史的一个终结 In 1368, the Ming Dynasty seized power, putting to an end the 100-year rule of the Mongolian Yuan Dynasty. However, the new emperor, Changzu, feared a Yuan revival. To prevent this, he ordered the strengthening of the northern defenses of his empire. The ruins of the old Tang city of Chang'an would form part of the new defense line. And so, after 500 years of neglect, Chang'an returned to the stage of history. This time, it had a new name, Xi'an. Xi'an means stability in the West, which was the dream of the first Ming Emperor. The rivers and mountains that surrounded the city made it easy to hold and difficult to attack. Advised by the scholar-turned-statesman Zhu Sheng, Emperor Changzu proceeded cautiously in establishing his rule. He ordered prefectures and counties to build taller defensive walls and keep more grain in storage. Xi'an 是第一道防线 to the Chinese and foreign tourists who flock to Xi'an, 
This old wall is the most obvious symbol of the ancient capital. But to the city's residents, it is part of the real world. Originally designed to enclose and protect the 3,000-year-old city, the wall is now a vital link between its past and present. Whether it was known as Chang'an or Xi'an, this city has, over the centuries, experienced rises and falls, honor and shame. Today, in the next stage of its long history, it is assuming a new look as a metropolis. Modern architects have created a new symbol of Xi'an by combining traditional and contemporary elements and blending classical and modern fashions. As a result, there is always something new to find in the ancient landscape of Xi'an. Tang Dynasty was one of the most glorious periods in China's cultural history. Poetry and music flourished, as did dance, in a society that was remarkably open to outside influences. But what was the music and dance piece that would provide the theme for the decline of the Tang Dynasty? Find out in Dance of Prosperous Tang in the series From Chang'an to Xi'an.